Hello, I'm John Lindlod and I wanted to give you an update about the results from the Eantic Interop test event in Berlin this month. Eantic means the European Advanced Networking Test Center. It's pronounced Eantic. When this Interop event is not going on, there are a test house in Berlin, Germany, that can help you test your networking gear. They also do a lot of certifications. So if you have a device that needs to have a certificate that it conforms to an RFC or radio standard, they can provide that. And they are now looking for potentially setting up some sort of NetConf and Yang certification. So if you have any customers that are interested in, in, in that, uh, make sure that they contact Iantic uh, or me. So in this yearly event, uh, that means that you have two weeks of lab time and being one big lab full of gear from all the different vendors, about 20 different vendors are in there. And uh, on site in Berlin at the Antic offices, there's about 70 engineers. And then all, all sorts of interop testing is going on in there for two weeks, very long days. And everything is happening under NDA, which means that we are not allowed to speak about failed combinations or so, which means every, makes it very, very bold. You try out new combinations and try out new things that you don't know if it's gonna work or not. Uh, so that's a very exciting environment to work in. Uh, and then uh, when this uh, event uh, is going on, there's a, Antic provides a catalog of different test cases that you can sign up for. In this year's event, there was 50 different test cases, 12 in eVPN, 12 in segment routing, 3 in microwave, 12 in PC, 3 in netconf in Yang, and that's where I was interested. Uh, and any test cases that succeed, uh, the combinations that you, I mean, we take the NSO assigns up for the orchestrator role in some use case and uh, then one vendor is uh, playing the PE role, another vendor is playing the other PE role and then you make sure the traffic is flowing and then tear down this traffic using netconfing hang and so on. So that's when we demonstrate these use cases to the Antic staff, they record it as successful and, and all of those successful test cases are then presented at the MPLS SDN NFE World Congress in Paris in April. And uh, there, only the positive results are disclosed, and any, anything failed uh, will not be mentioned ever. Uh, so this event is all about learning. You go to this event and participate in this uh, interop event to learn how you interop with different vendors and different stacks of software. Uh, so that's the main takeaway of this. And then as a bonus, some test cases actually get to work and then you can brag about them in Paris and show your customers that you really care about interoperability and show and demonstrate that you can actually make things work in, in real life. So here's uh, uh, some screenshots of the different use cases that we participated in. Uh, it's actually one more that we didn't put a picture of here. Uh, on the top here, you see the L3 VPN service creation using NetConf and Yang. It's, uh, this use case is about using the ITF L3 VPN sta now standard service model on, on top and using NSO as a controller to control different provider edge equipment from different vendors. And you see the, the logos of all these vendors on this slide here. I will not say today uh, exactly which combinations that we tried or what actually worked. Uh, on stage in Paris, we will also demonstrate one of the things we did in this uh, figure 38 on the left here, uh, where we had a setup with uh, an orchestrator from another vendor on top and uh, NSO as the domain two controller and another controller on the left, and then devices from different vendors on the bottom. And uh, NSO is then getting commands over Netcom from the north and sending out netconf to the devices on the south. And then you had traffic generators on each side so that when things are orchestrated and f uh, flowing correctly, it goes all, traffic goes all the way from TG1 to TG2 and back, and then you tear it down again and the traffic is gone. So basically, uh, the NSO use case looks like this. You have NSO as the orchestrator with the L ITF L3 VPN service model on top and another Yang model that we made on the fly that contains information that is not captured by the L3 VPN service model. And then we wrote a small L3 VPN service app, some hundred lines of Python or so, with different backends for different vendors. So we had templates in there for eight different vendors in this application. And then you have uh, 
and so managing the devices to PE1 and PE2 uh, over netconf. And certainly we fetched the netconf, uh, the, sorry, the Yang models from the devices directly from those devices and built NEDs on the fly. Uh, if you look at it uh, f from another perspective, you can see that you have the portal which fills in uh, things like device name, VPN name, provider IP and length. That is the information that you get from the L3 VPN service model. The L3 VPN service application is then also retrieving interface information, I mean, which interfaces to be used for each customer from this topology database and assigning a VLAN ID to this network and then pushing it down to P1 and P2. Uh, the results is that we demonstrated interoperability with six different products, exactly which ones you will see in Paris. Uh, some uh, takeaways from this exercise is that uh, Confti users, some of those products uh, that we demonstrated interoperability with are running Confti. And uh, as we have seen every year, Confti users have a huge advantage in, in interoperability. And of course, some people say that, well, if you're using NSO and you're using Confti, certainly they will interoperate very well. And that's true. But it's not just because they are coming out of the same organization of Hadoop Cisco here. Uh, Confti is really implementing, making it easy to implement a system that conforms to the NetConf and Yang rules very well and no other solution there comes close when it gets to that. I can say I'm a Yang doctor, so I can say that from my neutral Yang doctor perspective that Confti users have a huge advantage. Uh, you can also notice that uh, some of these vendors that we are interoperating with in Atlantic, they have participated previously and we can say that the conformance is getting better from year to year and that's really good to see. that. These events are really great learning uh, places. You, you see a lot of things that you should fix in your own implementation, and that goes for NSO as well. Um, we see a lot of things that we need to do, and next year when we get to this event, things go better. Uh, another thing that evolves from year to year is the test cases that Yantic set in the Yantic catalog of things you can sign up for. Uh, in the first NetConf Yang interop event, uh, the requirement was very simple, basically that you were able to do a simple get config, change one element and push it back again. That was the first year. But this year, as you could see in the previous diagrams, we have uh, standardized ITF uh, service models on top and then uh, applications translating down to real world use cases. So it's much more complicated and realistic now. Uh, I can tell also that even though there are other controllers and orchestrators playing some of these uh, roles, there's just nothing like NSO out there. Nothing that comes close to what you can do with NSO and nothing that comes close with the speed you can develop these service applications. Uh, and finally, you can say that if, if we don't participate, I don't think that Yantic would continue with the NetConf and Yang interrupt testing just because of this, because there is nothing like NSO. No controller can do this, play this role except for NSO. So if we don't do that, uh, then there will be no net confining interrupt tests. That was about it. Thank you very much.